leadership and leaders matter enormously in the developing world, less so in the developed world. Uh, there are fewer institutions in the developing world, therefore leadership is really central. And in many countries, uh, the majority of Africa and the developing world generally, um, not only are there no institutions, there is a very minimal political culture. So leaders have enormous uh, ability to uh, change uh, events and to influence events, much more than structure, much more than contingency. And what I say in the book and what I say to my students is that uh, not only does leadership matter, leadership, uh, but, uh, leadership uh, in turn develops a political culture of democracy, which in turn begets institutions, which eventually, uh, after good governance and so on, uh, creates a situation where leaders matter less. It matters much less who governs Norway than who governs Botswana. It matters far less um, who governs uh, Germany even than it does uh, Zimbabwe because leadership is uh, fixed in Germany. Their institutions, uh, Chancellor Merkel can only do so much, whereas in an African country, the leader can, can in many places just rewrites the constitution and governs and leads according to a personal bent. Not really. Uh, not really. The, the leadership, I, I don't want to call them traits. I want to call them um, categories or, or, or really a better word is um, leadership um, capabilities. That's really the best word. And those capabilities uh, are the same the world over. Uh, leaders everywhere need, need emotional intelligence. They need to be able to listen and consult. And most of all, they need a vision, a comprehensive vision, critical in the, in the developing world, also in the, in the developed world. Then they need um, self-mastery, prudence, uh, integrity, which is much more than honesty, integrity of character is essential. Um, and there are many others, but those are the fundamental capabilities and a a, 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 a successful leader needs uh, these and many others. And a successful leaders sometimes only have 80% um, of the 12 or so uh, uh, capabilities that I mentioned in, in my book. But uh, that's sufficient, but one cannot lead without vision, emotional intelligence, ability to listen and hear what followers are saying, and the ability to connect. Now, followers play the same role everywhere. Uh, leadership, cons leadership consists of a leader and followers, and um, uh, leadership is the reciprocity between leadership and followers. Now, at, at some point, a, a, a um, charismatic cult leader can essentially um, pull his followers by the nose. Um, but political leaders can't do that. And, and my favorite um, example of leadership followership being reciprocal is in Singapore, which many people characterize as a uh, quasi-democratic or a non-democratic uh, city-state. But in fact, Lee Kuan Yew, uh, when he was in power, and his son, Kennedy School graduate, now in power, really, uh, really uh, was always, um, may, always checked back with his people. He campaigned every two years. He uh, uh, did an answer and response, did a call and response. Uh, ran Singapore as if it were a Quaker meeting. And, and his ability to do that 
um, gave his leadership a, a a certain strength which his successors have have uh, have uh, followed well i sought some case studies of effective leaders in the developing world and i chose mandela suretsi kama lee kuan yu and kamal ataturk as uh, uh, persons coming from different geographical and cultural and, and in terms of Ataturk, temporal um, periods and, and areas and so on so to, to get some uh, differences. But I chose them because they were uh, successful and effective leaders, which uh, each of whom demonstrated an ability to lead in difficult and, uh, difficult context, difficult times, and to, and, and all to exemplify the central point of the book that leadership does matter, that structure and contingency are important, but not as important as leadership, especially in, in uh, the developing world. The most important thing that the Kennedy School has traditionally done, it needs to continue, that is, to give a solid um, training in all aspects of leadership to persons who are potentially going to be leaders. That's the Prime Minister of Singapore, obviously gained something from his um, years at the Kennedy School as well as from his genes. Uh, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, again, from her genes as well as from the Kennedy School. There are many others. Uh, uh, many of my former students are aspirant leaders. I was in Zambia um, this summer, met uh, several former students who are hoping to be politically successful. Uh, and the Kennedy School needs to do what it does so well, teach them fundamental economics, fundamental trade theory, fundamental governance theory, um, uh, and how to uh, fundamentally um, how to lead which is more than lead in the courses that the that are taught at the Kennedy School in, in the center uh, there's an ethics component of everything the Kennedy School does that's critical to 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 uh, future leaders but uh, future leaders are those whose horizons have been broadened by the Kennedy School rubbing shoulders with others from other countries, um, gaining something of the hectic nature of, of American democracy and learning about themselves and the world.